Hello, everybody. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about essentials, per se, for each popular aesthetic that I mentioned in my last video. This and my previous video and the next video I'm going to post are all based on a research paper I wrote for English class. Our judgments towards others can be so harsh and have such an impact on not only our life, but their life as well. The question that has stayed with me throughout this research experience is what effect does personal style have on interpersonal communication? Making assumptions comes with having a normally functioning human mind. It's extremely normal. We all have intrinsic biases and judgments based off of our own personal experiences, likes, dislikes, etc. These are all held within our psyche and subconscious, and they really affect how we perceive ourselves, others, and everything around us. In this video, I'm trying to explore the relationship between the garments people choose to wear and their connection to mainstream aesthetics that most people will recognize and make judgments on. The appearance of anything is made to be almost as important as what actually is. For example, people will support almost anything as long as it looks good and appealing to them. Things that look bad to somebody will be disregarded or even mistreated. I obviously find this idea revolting, but also everywhere I go. And I actively participate in this as well because of my human mind. It's a normal thing. Judging does not make you a good or bad person. It's part of being a human and living through this human experience. I picked up this book called Self-Expression by Mitchell S. Green. I will make sure to credit him at the end of this video. But on the first page of this book, they wrote, in expressing ourselves, we manifest some part of our point of view. Examples of this includes our beliefs, emotions, moods, and experiences. Why have we not dug deeper as a collective to discuss how fashion can be purely about self-expression and protection from the elements? Why does it have to be something that people are judged so heavily on and rated on? Page four of the book, the author states that self-expression is bound with communication. When we put on clothes, whether we like it or not, it sends messages for others to decode. <laughs> and most judgments made are unconscious as well, but their effects are ever present in our realities. In some cases, our commitment to our personal style becomes a liability. <laughs> when we're trying to impress or get a certain reaction out of someone else, then we're put into a position where their personal assumptions about my appearance or your appearance affects how that person is not only gonna think of you and communicate with you, but also how you think about yourself. In another article I read called Hipster Wars, Discovering Elements of Fashion Styles, I will make sure to credit it at the end, these research scientists claim to define elements of certain styles and they claimed that the clothing we wear and our identities are closely tied, revealing to the world clues about our wealth, occupation, and socio-identity. The last source I looked at for this research assignment was the Psychology of Fashion and Why We Wear What We Wear podcast episode on the Conscious Chatter with Kestrel Jenkins podcast. 
here the host, Kestrel, is interviewing Annabelle Maldonado. They both argue that personal style is not random. <laughs> and there is a relationship between your emotions, personality, and aesthetic. Based on the research that Annabelle has done, she stated that in terms of inner needs, for example, if you live a life that's lacking in spontaneity, you may be attracted to a piece or a dress that speaks of something more exotic. Whatever your needs are, you're going to be attracted or more attracted to something that you feel conveys that. This has been an epiphany for me as I've started to view the correlation <laughs> to the clothes I'm drawn to. Any visual stimuli affects cognition. This absolutely includes clothing. All the different shapes, textures, materials, colors. There's various levels to this, of course. First, you have a baseline aesthetic. If you know who you are, what you feel best in, and what you stand for, your closet will reflect that. Another thing I want to mention is that Identity itself is such a dangerous thing because identity is best friends with ego and ego is also best friends with making judgments and assumptions on other people to make them the other or you the other and I just feel it's important to mention because I'm not at all trying to reinforce this idea of ego but it is extremely prevalent in today's society i just feel that adding awareness adding a, just a little bit of awakening and understanding to that can help you express what you feel is your identity in ways that are constructive one thing that annabelle said to add to this was Basically, most of the time, we're judging people on their appearance. It happens on a very subconscious level. It's not that most of us are so mean-spirited that we really dissect everything. It's more that the brain is like a computer, and it likes to make efficient, snap judgments. When it sees visual cues, they're comparing these cues to everything else that is stored in the individual brain, so they associate them with a certain quality. So it's very important and powerful and not something we should take lightly. I think the way we can really leverage the power of clothes is to learn a little bit more to understand the meaning. And I think she just summed up everything I said so perfectly. <laughs> the book Self-Expression by Green and the Conscious Chatter podcast both claim that our emotions are interlinked with how we express ourselves. I agree with this. It's clearly not all there is to it. Personal style is, of course, also affected by circumstances and past experiences. But I want to discover what people are communicating when they wear certain styles or garments. If I can put myself into someone else's shoes and see what are they trying to communicate based off their outfit instead of what do I think about them based off their outfit, I find that so much more helpful, so much more beneficial and coming more from a place of love and understanding and compassion for other people instead of making those efficient snap judgments about somebody and either writing them off or putting them on a pedestal. One thing that my sources didn't mention were more of some modern aesthetics or mainstream aesthetics that are more relevant to young people today. Not only youth, of course, but because this is my age bracket, it is what I'm choosing to focus on because I can understand it the best. Finally, I'm going to be addressing what the title of this video actually is, which is my personal opinion on some of some of the outfit essentials for popular aesthetics, some of which I just mentioned. So starting off with the kid core slash kawaii aesthetic, I've put down pastels, plushies, 
and pop culture references from kids shows games and movies etc i think that the pastels just stems from a very light playful fun childlike place of course as well as the plushies stuffed animals and pop culture references i feel like this style is all about nostalgia for sure next is street style for me i've definitely noticed sneakers being a big component of street style and baggy slash comfortable clothing as well as mixing neutrals and earthy tones with more bright colors and patterns and even textures there's i've seen to find a big mix of neutrals mixed with really bright pops of color and not even necessarily bright but definitely more pungent powerful colors for the skater aesthetics i have found a lot of t-shirts black jeans and joggers and vans and converse or any sort of flat skating shoe next the prep style i've noticed tons blazers slacks and definitely a lot of color coordination so monochromatic looks things of that nature for the hipster aesthetic i found pants boots and kind of mismatched colors and patterns are very common for the y2k aesthetic most of you if not all of you could already tell low-rise jeans a huge thing for this aesthetic it was just the trend of the time and now it's completely encapsulated into that style as well as the colors pink and blue in their lighter shades and also sweatsuits slash tracksuits slash juicy juicy <laughs> For the baddie aesthetic, I noticed a lot of cutouts, um, even a lot of asymmetry, definitely a mix of tight and loose clothing, more so tight clothing in going out looks and more so tight tops, loose bottoms and casual everyday baddie looks. I'm doing this because I find saying the word baddie cringy. <laughs> But it is a really popular aesthetic right now. Um, I also found that sunglasses were a big thing for the baddie aesthetic. For the goth aesthetic, definitely chunky boots and jewelry. And also tights that are super distressed and really distressing everywhere. And last but not least the bohemian style i found a lot of flowy skirts dresses and mainly earthy tones in regards to color my experience my personal experience aligns with the conclusions i've gathered from this research and i found in my life that clothes have always affected not only the way i communicate with other people the way people communicate with me but also my sense of self in my opinion it's something so influential yet something not taught or even recognized i'd invite anyone watching this video to just dig deeper look beneath the surface of your everyday clothes and Stay curious and open to others, regardless of what they have on their bodies. And with that, I'm ending this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this, got something out of it. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I appreciate you so much and I hope you have an amazing day. And you can just appreciate every little thing that makes you happy. Bye, guys.